Everywhere I fly to, you know what? If it's raining, this is my favorite thing. We need the rain. <laughs> no matter where I go. We need the rain. We needed the rain. I know it flooded, but we needed it. We needed the rain. The farmers needed the rain. They'll throw that in, too. The farmers need it. Like, you knew that. How do you know that? I don't. I'm tied into agriculture. Farmers need it. I like the rain. Get out. Marie Anderson on the Adam Carolla Show. Honey, oh Louie Anderson, that's the uh, stand and special. The book, Hey Mom, Stories for My Mother. But you can read them, too. It's available right now on Amazon. And uh, and LouieAnderson.com. And LouieAnderson.com. Go you to can... AmCarolla.com and bookmark your Amazon page and click on through and help the pirate ship. I want to thank Tommy John for uh, sponsoring this half of the show and Beach Body. Check them out at uh, text Adam to 303030. Set up that free trial. And Med Men. I'll tell you all about them in a second. And Geico as well. Save that 15%. Good to see you, Louie Anderson. Good to see you. How are you, Adam? I'm doing well. You seem very in a good mood today. Not mm-hmm. that I know you well enough mm-hmm. to where I know if you're in a good mood, but you, and maybe these people can attest, you seem to be in a good mood today. I started off in a bad mood, but I feel like I've purged myself. You did. Myself. You yeah, I heard some of the purging. Yes, and now I'm in a in a better mood. Relatively yeah. speaking, he's glowing. This is I'm glowing. Good. That's, that's right. Yeah, Louis, you can tell in your... Anyways, that's enough of that. <laughs> Louis uh, got himself uh, an Emmy. I was so excited to see you win that uh, Emmy for Bastards. Thank you. Um, and I'm so... And your friend, Jimmy Kimmel... Yeah, may, was, may, I knew I was going to, this was just, this is just, I've never told anybody this part. All right. I said, Jimmy Kimmel's opened the pot uh, with the, uh, the Emmy show. Right. With, I never thought that I would say that my favorite TV mom is Louie Anderson. <laughs> right. He wrote that joke or someone wrote it. And I said, oh, that's good. It's a good omen. <laughs> that's a good omen. And I've always felt like Jimmy Kimmel's a great guy. And so I just felt lucky there. I think you're right. I think he's been lucky for me as well. Um, the uh, book, and, and uh, Louis, you, uh, tell us about your background. 11 brothers and sisters? 10 brothers and sisters, five With sisters, you, five brothers. Right. I was the 11th one. And that's one of the questions I asked my mom in the book, who she's deceased. But I asked her, I said, what was it like to bring home your 10th? Did it not, was it a sack of potatoes? Right. That you just kind of like, here, honey, take them. One of the kids, you know. Well, I feel, you know, in a world where I don't like uh, these uh, little snowflakes and everyone's crying abuse. But I think having more than five and a half or six kids is a form of abuse. Like, I it's agree. Just, it's impossible. Like my son and my daughter, I, I have twins. They're both sort of vying for the attention of me and mommy. Could you come out here? Let's walk to Starbucks. I'm yeah. going to jump on the tram. If there were 11 of them, <laughs> They just could never, you just take the attention and then you'd whack it up and you'd do this math and it'd be like me saying, all right, Sonny, Natalia, would you guys be comfortable with a little less than a fifth of the attention we're currently giving you? And the answer would be no, that'd be unacceptable. Well, that makes it abuse. Well, but part of that is the time we live in now right. about attention, I think. But also, you're right, but my mom, that's one of the things I put in the book. How did she make us all feel like? which is true, that we were numero uno. And I think that, I don't know how she did it. I did mean, you, you grow up without without money? We had no money, but we didn't dwell on it. It wasn't like a, you didn't come out and go, we have no money. Right. We just had, we had enough money. We had, you know, food and clothing for the most part, but nothing special. We didn't have a lot of anything because my dad, you know, he drank. So he oftentimes would drink the whole check before he got home. Really? And then we'd have to wait a whole week to kind of, my mom would have to make up for that somehow by borrowing money from other people. It was, you know, alcoholism you know, is alcohol and drug and drugs. They're selfish in some ways. And I'm not blaming the people, but they're selfish addictions because mm. they need those. That's number one. Then your wife might be number, you know, two. And then your kids might be number three or four or six or, you know what I mean? So I, it, it's a thing. It's all encompassing. The whole idea is to get, like, for a drug addict, everyone knows that. 
Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to get more drugs, whether you steal your mom's cameo that Uh, she's had that was her mother's. It doesn't matter. I uh, also just read that uh, there were 11 of you and there were five that died during birth. Whoa. Or five more. Five more. Yes. Well, my mom that's had what I'm 16 saying. births. Yeah. So I'm saying. So yes. like she would like threaten your dad, like, you better stop drinking or you can only have sex with me 27 times yeah. this week. Yeah. Like, holy crap. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you know, I don't know if it was just a fertility. Thing. My mom was <laughs> part rabbit. I have. But here's a thought that I want to float out to everyone, which is kind of interesting and, and part and parcel of what is going on in today's society. And, and you, you mentioned... You were poor, but you didn't know. I mean, you just you you were a kid. You you lived yeah, life you as know. a kid. And do we have do we have food? To, you know, good food, or do we just have the food that we have to? You know what I mean? Because yeah. when they go grocery shopping, you know, when we were growing up, you had that extra stuff that you looked forward to when the groceries first came. You know, the cereal or whatever, the cookies or whatever it was. And so, lots of times, you just had the food that. You basics. didn't really care that much about well, it. Well, uh, being a kid back back in, in our day just meant you're a kid. You go outside, you go find some other kid, you go wrestle with that kid, you throw a dirt clod at that kid, you go screw around, you can yeah, find a it. bicycle, or, or whatever it is, chase a dog around yeah. or something, then come home, eat whatever slop and you go they in made, the and woods. then leave You again. might go in the woods. Like, you just know, we whatever. Yeah, like, you but just... there was no have and have nots, really, because you didn't have the internet, you didn't know what the Kardashians were up to, you didn't have right. to keep up with them. And so here's the thought that formed as I was thinking about this, because I think there's like a high misery index amongst all kids now. And especially it's not like poor kids. It's look, there's always going to be someone who has more than you do. And I I don't want to sound like a cliche machine, but I'm like, my daughter is in the 99th percentile, but she's unhappy that she doesn't have access to a private jet. You know what I mean? (laughs) Now, we didn't know anyone. And Wonder Woman had a jet. That's all. That's the only private person. And Wonder Wonder Woman. Woman. Those are the only two people that had jets. So (laughs) I wasn't even on my... I couldn't be disappointed that that was one more thing we didn't get. Now, my sister has friends that have... Pools with water slides attached to the pool. Jeez, and, of course, yeah. she wants to know where hers is because she just has a b- boring old pool. Well, she wants a moat. Right. So how about <laughs> this? When people – yeah, she wants a lazy river. A lazy river. Um, <laughs> yeah. I said, all right, when you were a kid, y- you know, some people's parents – not my parents because we didn't have that much to eat, but my parents – you know, the parents – you better finish your pork chop and your peas or kids in Africa who are starving. Yeah. And it never worked. You know, the idea of there's people worse off than you, it never works with kids. Like you can say to the kid who wants a second dog, you know, some people don't have, some little kids don't have any dogs. Like they live in little apartments and they can't have a dog. And they're like, yeah, yeah. When I wear my second dog, like they don't, they can't go no, there. They don't have, but that. where they can go is up. So kids and even human beings aren't really capable of, getting the empathy going and boy, I certainly feel satisfied with my pork chop because I know there's people in Africa that don't get any pork chop. They can't go that direction, but they can go up and go, Cammy's got a water slide and a lazy river. And now I'm devastated that I just have a trampoline and a pool. Right. So it's kind of a bad, it's a fundamentally flawed wiring yeah. that we can only look when did, up light and on be gratitude. dissatisfied. Yeah, when did it energy. happen? When did the empathy disappear? Because it started to erode and disappear, don't you think? I don't so, think it ever worked. Like, I don't do you think it never was. Well, again, every mom was like, their kids in Africa and nobody doubled down on the eating. They just yeah. went like, I don't know well, these kids up. are, but screw them. You know, like we never really could do it. But now the internet and cable and satellite has just blown everything up and now they're all just staring at stuff that they want where when you were we didn't had the sears catalog we had yeah stared at a bra (laughs) (laughs) we didn't have anything we just had we went to the country club market and when my dad got paid my mom would pick him up so we would go there to get food so he didn't drink all the food Mm. where where did you grow up paul minnesota st paul east side of st paul Oh man, it's a little rough, right? And not not then. Yeah, I mean, it was we lived in projects, and those projects, you know, we had lawns. People oh. took care of their lawns in those right. projects. Where did you find the humor, and how soon did it kick in for you? I think, um, I think my dad was always funny. You know, he was like, eh. you know, he was that kind of guy that a noisy. Eh. Well, eh. my mom would go, hey. Um, 
why don't you put some pants on? Because he loved to be in his, just his boxers. And I'll put some pants. Because she'd say, uh, Dorothy and uh, Jim are coming over. Is that so? <laughs> Is that, isn't that wonderful, Louie? <laughs> Dorothy and Jim. Two more freeloaders in the society. <laughs> And she'd go, put some pants on. Y'all put some pants on when they start paying the rent. <laughs> you want pants? I need rent. And then she'd look at him and he'd put the pants on. But So I got that. That was, I didn't know. I, I, I laughed because that's funny. He was not afraid, you know, he was not afraid to make those kind of comments. Archie the, Bunker-esque? Yes. Any the, any of the other siblings pursue the comedy? No, but my brother Roger was much funnier than I was, and everybody always says that to me. He goes, "You know, your brother Raj was really the funny one. <laughs> He's in the, the funny one. <laughs> he really was. He was so funny, and he could do a joke, and he could rattle off stuff, and he had a hundred jokes, and you know, he really made. He really, really, really was funny. You know, it was it was interesting last night over dinner." We were having the um, also there's this new world order where kids can like trade in their dinner, like in the middle of dinner, which, what? again, it's all horrible yeah, parenting. A, but like my, that's a brand my new daughter thing. takes like a bite off a chicken leg and goes, uh, not feeling it, and, like hands it in and goes, w- let's get the pizza going. You know, like can you imagine as a kid trading yeah. mid, oh, mid yeah. dinner. Was, that's what's for dinner. Yeah, yeah that's what's for you to go to bed. Dad would eat the chicken leg, but you wouldn't get yep, anything yep. else. Yeah. So the. Uh, <laughs> So my daughter was explaining that she had a photo shoot at school today because she won (laughs) in the sixth grade. She got most likely to have a YouTube page if you want to know what year we're in. They do superlatives in sixth grade now? I know. I don't remember that in sixth grade, but they do the most likely and then it's something like that. Um, My son won nothing. My, who actually has a YouTube page? Actually, <laughs> he's claiming Aww. that he has 125 followers. So and, he raises, so, his, and, raises his head weekly in the back. I have a YouTube page. Yes, Quiet. and 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 the imposter that uh, won the on the, the interloper that won on the male side has no followers. Oh, ironically, that's hurt. but I said, you know, what about the humor? Because I got class clown. You know, yeah. I said, uh, how are we doing on humor? And he's like, eh, I'm top 15. <laughs> And then he explained to me that the class clown was, in fact, a clown. Whereas he had a more evolved sense oh, of humor. Like this guy was guys. doing like pratfalls and knock, knock, knock jokes. Yeah. You guys ever noticed? That's right. Yeah. What's he's the a, deal? He was Chuck. more the Mitch Hedberg of the sixth grade. Oh, What's the deal him. with these erasers? Yes. Yeah. That, did you really have... He was the Stephen Wright of the yeah, sixth grade. Sure. Yeah. More droll. Mm-hmm. Did you really have class clown? We you, did, well, well, we had class... I got class clown in high school. Right. That was yeah, like yeah, in high school. You're right, but not in... And, in, and so... I remember say I like to you know I like to lord it over him because I want to give him an eating disorder one day, <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> and I said, but you know I was class clown, but no pressure, but uh, but he was breaking it down like I'm no clown, I'm a wordsmith. I like you know oh, what I mean wow. like I assemble words. Yeah. And, and I'm, and he's I'm, an old comedian. Yeah, and smoking on stage. <laughs> he's a little too hip for the room. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. that's the problem. And uh, he's only Largo, right. <laughs> He's the only sixth graders' influences are Mark Marin and Mort Saul. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you think people know who Mort Saul is? No. no, he was trying to get out. I he was trying Mark to. Saul. He doesn't know either. He was trying to get out of it. But I was explaining the rules are: you have to make that whoever's in the auditorium laugh. You That's know what right. I mean? Like I don't care if it's beneath you at this point. Yeah. Class clown. If that Play means doing audience. a pratfall, you got to do a pratfall. That's how you do get the class. That's you get the lofty <laughs> class clown. That's right. As you ascend to yeah. that uh, that summit, like I did, refine your sensibilities down the mm-hmm. road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I wasn't really very funny. I was really quiet in school, mm-hmm. so I never, you know, I was more of a smart. Your, it was your brother smart. that was my brother was much funnier than I was. But I, you know, I'm there was a twenty year span between my oldest brother and the youngest brother, so there was a large like when I was born. Some of the people were starting to move on from the family, <laughs> you know, get right. out, get married. My sister got married. My brother went in the Marines. How many people could live in a project? Well, we had a four bedroom. Hey. So that's, you know, pretty a big. Pretty big. It was mm-hmm. a pretty big one. So my mom and dad had one. Then the newest baby, <laughs> probably the newest baby was in there. Right. And then me and my brother Tommy had one. Then my brother Kent, my brother Kent was already gone. 
he was in the Marines. And um, then Billy, he he was, Billy and Jimmy had one. Then Lisa and Sheila had one. And then my sister Shanna lived with my aunt. You were, uh, I'm going to tease something. You're staring at a huge evil Knievel banner in the oh. back. And you say he used to come to your shows yeah. in Vegas? Yeah. I want to know about that. Okay. Because I have some evil Knievel stories as well. First, I'll tell you about Tommy John. Spring has sprung, man, and that means it's spring cleaning time. Let's start with your underwear drawer. Go for the mind-blowing comfort of Tommy John underwear. It'll never ride up. The waistbands never roll down. It's wedgie-proof. Plus, socks that never fall down. Undershirts that say tucked in. And second skin tees, wrinkle-free resistant. They never shrink. It's just the best. All the stuff. The socks, the undershirts, the long johns. I don't even know if they like them called long johns, but I'll just call them long johns. They're all backed by the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. We all have them here. We all wear them on a daily basis. Everyone who tries them is converted, and you'll never go back to your conventional anything once you've experienced the majesty of Tommy John. Tommy John, no adjustment needed. Hurry to TommyJohn.com slash Adam and get 20% off your first order. That's TommyJohn.com slash Adam for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. So, Evil, what year would Evil come out to your shows in uh, Vegas? Let's see. I started in Vegas in 84. Uh, probably, when did he stop jumping? I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think. I would have would have been the late seventies, probably early eighties. Yeah. I don't know. Max Pat so will find out. I'm I trying know to think. that Robbie was already jumping. I think that. Robbie Knievel. So in Robbie Knievel, and so it was in the probably early nineties, eighties, mm-hmm. late eighties, early nineties, and he would come to my show. Came a couple of times. Really great, nice, sweet guy. Very nice to me. And I was like, that's Evil Knievel, because you know. When you grow up in the Midwest and you see Evil Knievel, that's a, you know, that's the coolest thing. I, I just loved, I loved who he was on all levels because he was so crazy. Last jump in 77. He was the biggest, most recognizable name on the planet for a while. And the uh, ultimate, as I've told you guys, but it was chronicled in a movie after I used to talk about it on Loveline, which is weird. I can't remember what movie used it, but... Um, the ultimate, when you're on a road trip and you're doing 20 questions, you do Evil Knievel. Oh. Because people go, is he an athlete? And you go, yeah. no, not really. Is he an actor? And you go, no, not, I'm not known for it. Maybe done some. And then they go, politician. You go, no. All right, wait singer? a minute. It's not a singer? No. <laughs> you go, but wait a minute. You would know. Everyone knows. Yeah. As a, as a household name. Yeah. And then they go back to uh, it's a comedian. And you yeah. go, no, no, no. no. And they, just, <laughs> they go, wait a minute. Not an athlete. No, no, no. no. Not, not that football player. Like, no, bat, no, no, no. Comedian. No. Singer. No. 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 Apologize. No. no. Like, no. It's all just no. All and no. they start going nuts. And then they go, Wait, hold on. The flying stunt man? Would you ask? Would you ask? Yeah. We, you know, we're not going to know who this person is. And you go, no, no. You'll know. You'll immediately. know immediately. Everyone in the car Everybody will know. know. Yeah. Everyone will know. And they'll go. And now they're, they're screwed because they can't wrap their mind around actor, singer, comedian, whatever. It's always just no. They hold on. Are they know. an animal? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it Benji? Yeah. yeah. Definitely an animal. It works. It works perfectly. It it does every time because they'll Good. never quite they'll never get to stunt or what whatever. Oh, I get it. Instagram model. Yeah, this uh, predated that, but yeah, uh, must be hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> you can still do it though. <laughs> now you can still use them. So, uh, Louis, your spirits uh, seem good. Yeah, I'm great. You seem like you're in a yeah. good place. I am, and you haven't always been in a good place. No, I mean, you know, I come from a depressed family. I, you know, I'm a compulsive eater. I'm a compulsive overeater, really. And so I've worked really hard on that. I've lost, you know, a chunk of weight. I don't talk about pounds because it's destructive, you know. Sure. To start that. But so, and I don't do, you know, any kind of drugs or, you know, alcohol that can, you know, I just don't do any of that. I think I've just kind of like got, you know, I kind of got through a lot of stuff because there were, I, you know, I think these books helped me quite a bit. My hey, Mom. Name of the book. Sorry, Dear, Go ahead. Dear Dad was the book I gave to Evil. 
um, which is weird to call him evil, by the way. Right. When you just talk to him, listen, evil, <clears throat> yeah. it just doesn't make it, you know. And I gave him that book, and and he later reconnected with Robbie and thanked me for that. And that was one of my best things about writing a book is that the fact that Evil Knievel read that book about my dad and, mm-hmm. forgave, and said, I better, I better, you know, reconnect with my son. And I just love that kind of stuff. But I think of my whole thing is, yeah, I think I, you know, comics, don't you think comics are, you know, a little back and forth, you know, as far as can get really, you know, depressed and isolate and those kind of things? I'm trying to think if it's inherent in in comedians. Now, I, I will say that if you, you know, if you're if you operate at a slightly slower and lower level, like I always kind of do things where it's like, oh, there's, uh, you know, my dog, Phil. And then there's like Elon Musk, you know, and then we're all just sort of in between <laughs> yeah. in the brain department. And Phil's pretty consistent. Right. Seems to be in a good mood most all yeah, the time. Yeah. Kind of tails wagging. Little things make him happy. He just show up and he's happy. You know, throw him some food. Feed him he's happy. Socks. Feed him a sock. Feed him one of my daughter's socks. Happy. And then I'm, I'll bet you Elon probably, you know, the more projects you have, the more plates you're spinning and the more things that can go wrong. And then <clears throat> also you don't have, and it's a little bit of a um, recipe for misery. That'll be the name of my book. I love it. Possibly the next Guns N' Roses album. (laughs) But here's a recipe for misery. Yeah. You know what you know. Yeah. And you do what you do and you operate the way you operate. And then you say to other people, now go do it. Right. And you assume they're going to just do it, but they're not operating on your level. And they're screwing things up and you expect them to think like you think because you're operating at that level. I'm, I'm, maybe Elon yeah. I- experiences that. So if you're operating at a slightly higher level and you have a little fine, a mo- little more finely tuned brain, you're opening yourself up for disappointment yes. because every single time I pass under an electronic freeway sign in Los Angeles and it says slow down, I scream at the sign because <laughs> That's the, I finely, think I'm that's the already, finely tuned brain? Yes, I'm already going slow. Like This is the worst right. thing, this is the biggest waste of time in the world, but right. my dog in the back seat doesn't do anything. Right. So I think there's a simpler, so maybe comedians, maybe they're operating up in the, the rarefied air and their brains are a little bit more finely tuned and thus they're going to be miserable because it's their job in Can a weird miser- way. Yes, it's, well, it's, 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 it's right. You yeah. got to figure out what's wrong with life. Yes. And then go out on stage and get paid and then go home and stop thinking about what's wrong with life. Yeah. But that's, that's not going to. That's not as easy. As, not easy to flip that. No, it's not easy. But, that switch. you know, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, that's a really great way to look at it. I think you do think, you know, your expectations because you, I don't know. Are we smarter? I don't know. But I think we do. We are in some sort of place where we notice things and can put them together and people seem to respond to it that other people don't notice. And I think that with comics, I think that they need that. And I think when you don't – if you're only doing an hour a night, I think, and then you're in Omaha, you go, ugh, I got to get out of Omaha. Right. You know what I mean? My thing was mostly um, I was taking all the stuff that my dad piled on me and – all that kind of stuff, and I took it too personal. And so I had to work really hard to get past that stuff because it was, you know, somewhat traumatic to me, you know, that he would kick my door in at 3 in the morning and say, Lardass, get up and do some exercise. Really? And then, yeah, and then I built a character out of being kind of a fat comic. I had a lot of fat jokes in the early days. And then... There's a dichotomy there. Do you lose weight? And then when you lose weight, people always say, and I'm not feeling sorry for myself, but people always say, you know, if you lose all your weight, it won't be funny anymore. Yeah. And, and I don't – I understand their thinking. I, I understand their thinking. But I, I – it always is – it still is – it's just – you know, it's kind of a kick in the gut. 
I, you know, I, I, don't, I feel the same way about that as I do about, you know, Eric Clapton getting off a of heroin or whatever it is. Like, I, I think he could still write some pretty good songs when I he wasn't too. high yeah, out of yeah, his yeah, mind. Yeah, and I, I think I, uh, you could tell some pretty good jokes. Uh, I think when you get into that, yeah, I mean, I think you, you, you choose the place you're sitting in. Mm. If you choose to be depressed, you'll be depressed. You have to, you know, like somebody says, oh, I feel like I'm laying in a swamp. Well, if you stood up, the swamp's only up to your your ankles right so you know i think it's a it's a, about making a decision and and working really hard at getting out of it and and those things they were traumas for me and i had to just really forgive my dad and get through them and you know well, he didn't he wasn't yeah. just saying it to me he yeah was say, he was saying it to everyone was your dad drunk when he did that yeah of course yeah that feels yeah very drunk and yeah. move yeah it was at three in the morning Yes. Uh, yeah. Was he a blackout drinker? Would he remember doing these things? Would he no. apologize? No, no, he remembered doing them. Yeah. He never apologized. Hey, that was something, wasn't it, last night? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like what? Bob Hope. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, Bob Hope was a huge influence on me. Oh, really? Yeah. His con- uh, you he- got a lot of range between Bob Hope and Evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> but he was really like his, you know, that Bob, hey, K- hey everybody, how- how's it going? Yeah. That right. definitely influenced the way I. Hey, hi everybody! I, that's really that. I stole that right without knowing it. Sure, I stole it because you know he'd come out and go. He was so good. Hey, wait, hey, Joey Henderson, bring her out here, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> then he'd go low. Oh, little Joey. What is that? Yeah, he do. He did that look where he kind of yeah. looked up and off. Mm-hmm. He'd even uh, change his middle name to Texaco at a certain point. <laughs> hey, it's Bob Texaco. Hope. Can I tell you my Bob Hope story? Because I always wanted to meet him. Please. It's a quick one. Yeah. I'm backstage. He was he never worked Vegas on the stage. He only did privates. He never he never like corporate stuff. Yeah, corporate stuff. So he was doing a corporate and I had the same agent. Mm -hmm. And I said, Frank, Frank Rio, great agent. I said, Hey, I want to meet Bob Hope. I have a show here at Bally's and I want to meet after so he said, I will get so I'm backstage. First of all, he I get up there and he said he'll be done in a few minutes. He did he and he was at like seventy minutes then. At ninety five minutes, he brought Dolores up to sing. His wife. Thanks for the memory, right, right. right? And then, so he goes, "All right, he's wrapping up. Come back, you know." In those things where they make a stage mm-hmm. that isn't really supposed to right. be a stage in the ballroom, right? So I go back there. There's a you know that weird staircase. They're all there, and I'm just like this kid going, this Bob, 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 Bob. I'm really excited. And um, Bob comes out, and he goes, I can say, I can swear on this. Go one. ahead, swear right. away. All right. So he comes, and he What gets, year is this, approximately? Ooh, let's see. I want to say 89, 90, mm-hmm. somewhere right. in there. He gets to the railing. He goes, God damn it! I almost fucking broke my neck on those cords right there when I walked out. Now, he had been thinking about that for 95 When he walked th- out. When he walked out. <laughs> yes. I almost fucking killed myself yeah. on these fucking cords. And Frank Rio goes, uh, Bob, this is a young comic that really wants to meet you, Louis Anderson. Hey, kid. Anyway, these <laughs> fucking cords, if you fucking know, who's responsible? Ah, fuck it. And then he walked out, and I never saw him again, but I just, uh, it killed me. He I will. Bad. He's just like every other comic. He will be missed. We, we cannot get those kind of mistakes out of our head. No, I, I people have no... <laughs> it's uh, when people come to visit the studio once in a while, a fan, and they're treated to one of Adam's, who left their top off the blah, 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 who didn't rinse out the this and that. Yeah, I very do it similar, all I do it, I do it all the time. It, it happens, like, it'll happen all the time where you'll say to someone, like, you'll go, like, all right, <clears throat> make sure there's, uh, there's a water, like a bottle of water out mm-hmm. there on stage, and they'll go, right, and then <laughs> no you problem. go, now, now here, very important, twist the cap off, break the seal, you know, break the right. perforate thing, and then just put it on loosely. Because if I'm holding the mic and I go for the oh, bottle, it, I can't, I yeah, have to put it under spill, my arm. I have yeah. to like set the mic down. So just, just snap it yeah. off and then just so put it loose back on the thing. And you go, fine. And you go out there, start doing your set. And you get about 12 minutes in, you reach for the arm bottle, you start turning the cap and the whole bottle starts turning. Yeah. You're in the middle of doing what you're doing. It just keeps turning. Then you pick it up and you start putting it under your arm while you're trying to hold the mic. And you're and thinking, squirts. I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. kill someone. That's all you can think about. And then you go the next 90 minutes, and as soon as you walk off stage, you're like, what the fuck happened with the bottle? Because it's like, 
there is a a weird thing. Can I just piggyback? Yes, right on please that piggyback. I mean, not literally. So, yeah, <laughs> no, I won't. Are bad, but, <laughs> <laughs> but metaphorically, please metaphorically piggyback. piggyback. Um, I say to them, look right at them. Try to get the contact with the people backstage. How do you want the water? I want the caps off. Oh, I do not want the caps on because mm-hmm. I I already went through what you went through. <laughs> I go, I want right. them off. They're right. never off. They're now, never off. They don't think you really want them off. Yeah. Right. They no, don't no. think it's right to take them off. And there is a weird, there's a weird <laughs> thing that you have to be up in that pilot seat. You have to be on stage or on camera or on whatever with the thing when you sort of, and, and this is why, whether it's uh, Bill O'Reilly or, um, got a friend at oh, uh, oh, MS- MSNBC. Uh, MSNBC. Now we'll think of his name in a second. That this transcends oh, politics. Yeah. No, O'Reilly's O'Donnell, on one side. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, 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 Chris, Dennis Miller. No. No. Chris, no. He's on the right, and on the left is Chris. Uh, Chris oh, uh, wrote the book. I mean, we'll think of a second. Everyone spazzes out equally, and the nicest people in the world spaz out because Lawrence O'Donnell. Lawrence O'Donnell. Oh, yeah, so you got the O yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. O and O. O. O'Donnell. O'Reilly. They still spaz out equally, and you kind of go. Well, O'Reilly's a jackass, and O'Donnell's a cool dude. Yeah, no, he'll nope. freak out, too. Everyone will freak out, because there's something about putting yourself in that position where you've had these discussions, like, I don't want this to happen. Like, I yes. don't, don't have this because happen. Because it throws the whole timing off. Yeah, or whatever. There's, I mean, there's something. Listen, you, to, it, this is, should not be happening. You're, you're just, should, <laughs> I should not be doing this. Well, I, you paid a lot of money uh, Lewis is to his not pants. fucking He's see me <laughs> do a no, screw you're, about it, it, There's no doubt that it throws us out. There's no doubt that it's all wrong. But there's something that's so universal <laughs> About Louis and Lawrence and and Carola and O'Reilly, we all share this one. We have this one thing in common, which is it it cuts you like a knife. You go yeah. from zero to out of control <laughs> asshole. And Bob Hope, like it just it's just I there. Almost kill myself. <laughs> Right. I'll, I'll never now, forget that. I'll never forget I'll him saying that. I guarantee he said to somebody, don't run the cords, the black cords on the black stage right. right at the top of the steps. I'm 77 goddamn years old. I'm wearing <laughs> uh, floor shine shoes. I'm going to catch a heel and I'll break a hip and I'll be dead in four months. Don't you like, think don't, he tripped them? Don't I'm you think sure he he's had the conversation yes, a million yeah. times and that's what. That's why you go and, ballistic. And that is exact. It, it's just like, has that been happening it since, has, it's, since vaudeville? I mean, it has. I don't want a cup. I want a glass. Right. I need a glass to do this trick. They, the, the, uh, I'll tell it to Louie. Well, first I'll tell you about Beach Body On Demand, and then I'll tell it to Louie. Wide variety of workouts from the comfort of your own living room, 24-7 access, anywhere, anytime. You get your computer, your web-enabled TV, tablet, smartphone, Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, and more. Work out on your own schedule. Some is short, is uh, just 10 minutes, and don't require any extra equipment. If you're traveling around, you want to burn those calories in a hotel room, you get your smartphone with you. Beach Body On Demand, hundreds of effective workouts for all fitness levels, bodybuilding, weight training, cardio, yoga, even uh, dance workouts would be like one million plus people currently on Beach Body On Demand. Gina? Yeah, I people are tweeting me left and right about other ones to try. People are loving Pio because that's what I've been doing. Lots of flexibility, lots more energy. I think I'm going to try Sean T next because that's another one everybody loves. And I'm having a blast. I, it's it's fun. It feels doable. It's not terrifying, and it's working. And no prying eyes. You do it in your own right. living room. Uh, you get a free trial membership when you text the word Adam to thirty thirty thirty. That's Adam thirty thirty thirty. Free access. Free. Full free. Try it out. Adam, 30, 30, 30. Yes. Uh, Louis Anderson in studio. I think we should take a quick break. We'll come back and do the news with Louis and Gina Grad right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gina Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gina Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdowns. Need news with Gina Gina Grad. 
the news with Gina Grad. Yeah, a couple of updates on the YouTube shooting from the other day. Now some more uh, some more information is coming out. So the woman who opened fire at YouTube headquarters in Northern California may have been a disgruntled user of the video sharing site, according to CNN. Not a disgruntled girlfriend, not anyone related to anyone there. Uh, police said, really? Yeah. Police said the woman uh, in Tuesday's shooting was in her late 30s. She wounded three people at the campus in San Bruno, that's uh, just south of San Francisco, and turned the gun on herself. A fourth person suffered an ankle injury while they were trying to escape the gunfire. Authorities are investigating a website that appears to show the same woman accusing YouTube of restricting her videos, which are in Farsi, Turkish, and English, and accusing, quote, close-minded YouTube employees of putting an age restriction on videos, saying it's aimed at reducing views and discouraging women from making new videos. Um, police said there's no evidence the shooter knew any of the victims that were targeted. I pulled a couple of clips. What this kind is, of videos was well, she I'm, making? I'm I'm going to show you. They are bizarre, to say the least. So the first one is kind of more her manifesto. It's a little bit of a rant against YouTube. This is, uh, I think this is... Once the videos are pulled down or once they're restricted or whatever. Well, yeah, once she sort of declared, uh, uh, you know, anger against YouTube. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. And I'm not the only one. So recently, they also attacked my Persian channel, Nassim Asafs. And if you go and check my videos, you see that my new videos hardly get views. And my old videos that used to get many views, I stopped getting views. So this is because I'm being filtered. And another thing, they age restricted my ab workout video. All right, hold on. How's she doing an ab video? An ab workout video. What is the message of her videos, though? She has... uh, she has dance videos that she's dancing in front of a green so screen. So it's nothing political. Uh, not, not any of the Why ones that I could dig up. Why are they restricting her non-political stuff? They apparently well, said some of them were inappropriate content, and I, they I leave think, it at that. I, I had also read that, yes, that, and also that YouTube did a thing, and someone could probably clarify this, they demonetized a lot of channels that had less than 10,000 right. subscribers or whatever, right. and whatever yes. the number is, and hers was that, and she apparently relied on that income and was yeah. curious about it. Yeah. The, a lot of these videos don't have a lot of hits. Yeah, Some of them YouTube, do, a lot of them don't. Yeah. It, if YouTube determines your video is not advertiser-friendly, it pulls all monetization out of it. She was doing like vegan stuff, yeah. lifestyle stuff, well, and, wow. stuff. Yeah, and so, so no, s- no political or message or not anything that, like that. Not that's come Very out. interesting. So- there's another Where is she video. from? Do we uh, know? Well, she has a Farsi channel. Um, I don't know if, it, if anyone specified exactly where she's from, but uh, she has a ton of weird videos, like mm. in wigs and dancing. And wasn't that a flag or something in back of her? I don't know. What, just I don't a know. Design with a bunch of stars. I but I pulled this one video of hers, um, which I think is about being vegan, because I had to watch it a few times, and that's what I picked up on. Here's here's part of it. Oh boy, she got a rabbit. Yeah. She got a. Mask. Got a mask. Waffle stomp. It's got a very uh, Lady Gaga vibe. Nice to meet you. Can I kiss you? I could show you hidden things. Pain, sadness, hair, crime, style your food. Oh, my brain. Look at that meat. It looks like your next heart attack. Life's a game. Oh, so she's just nuts. She's a little, yeah. New job. All right. Life. Cell phone. This is all you want. Ain't it? It, it, go, it goes on and on. All right, she's crazy. Yeah, yeah so she's from San Diego. Yes, and apparent. Well, yeah, she's. Well, she, not, that was her I last know residence. About that part. But, I know, I know, but, but that's all they're saying. <laughs> on her way to the headquarters, apparently she was pulled off by the side of the road asleep, and her father alerted the authorities, according to something I read online, to go to go get her and say that something is not right. She might be doing something crazy. They went and, I guess, woke her up and started questioning her and said, oh, she's fine. Let her go. But she had guns in the back or whatever, and she was on her way to YouTube. So it's well, all very I made it bizarre. super clear with my kids, which is if they ever start pulling any of this shit, I'm going to get a drifter to kill them. <laughs> like, I won't do it myself. I'm far too important. I'm too big of an earner uh, and all that kind drifter. of stuff. But sure. I will. I know many drifters. And by the way, L.A. is now drifter central. central. Like I, I literally yeah. can't swing a cat around without eating, hitting a drifter. And uh, they're all, look, $4,500 is a king's ransom to one of those people. And I can write it off. So if you're ever planning on doing any of this kind of shit, I, can write I, will, it off. I will immediately. Adam, what's this line item on your deductions? <laughs> That's business uh, expense. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. This, uh, we were studying drifters. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I did a stand-up bit about drifters. Oh, okay, well, that makes perfect sense. Right. Anyway. 
So I had to pay him to study them. But either way, it's understood <laughs> that I will hire a goddamn drifter to kill you. And that should be the understood uh, conversation. Every parent should have that with their child, which is, look, you want to get a lot out of control. You uh, feel like you're a woman trapped inside a man's body. or You want to do any of that? No problemo. Yeah, go vegan. Uh, whatever you whatever you like, start following the band Fish. I'm not going to be happy, but go ahead. But you start getting into the stockpiling, the uh, the arsenal. ammo and the arsenal, yeah. and uh, sending off the crazy videos and uh, anything close to a manifesto. I call the drifter in. Mm. That's all. It's the smart. drifter. It's reasonable. That's, that's right. Always looming over there. Right. Hey, is that a drifter by my room? <laughs> Yeah, it depends. <laughs> it's just a warning to you. It yeah. depends. <laughs> well, t- yeah. yeah. Tiger Woods is returning to the Masters for just the second time since 2013. Tiger, who's battled injuries and personal issues for years, has finished in the top 12 in his last three tournaments and currently ranks in the top 10 for stroke gained overall. Woods, he's at uh, 12 to 1, is fifth among betting favorites to win the green jacket behind Roy McIlroy, Bubba Watson, Dustin Johnson, and Justin Thomas. If he wins, it would be the first major championship in a decade. Amazing. It would also mark his fifth Masters title. Yes, tons, for a comeback. tons. Oh, I know, Christ. Tons of fans. I'm yeah. hoping that he doesn't, if only for the reason we talk sometimes about how we hate lazy headline writers. You know, every every scandal is gate. Every scandal oh, oh, is gate. Can I guess? Mm-hmm. Let me guess. Yeah. Out of the woods? No. Oh, Ti- oh you'll always. Oh, the, tiger decade. roars back. Oh, tiger that's roars no good. back. Yeah, that's There's so a true. lot of tiger that's roars. So true. Yeah, I don't like that. You're, you're, you're worthless. You're, you're bankrupt creatively. Okay. Yeah. Or I agree. Words. I agree. Well, actor Channing Tatum and actress Jenna Dewan Tatum are splitting up after eight years of marriage. Mm. Apparently, yeah. I'm going to have that un- uncomfortable conversation with my wife when I get home, which is, if it could happen to them, it could happen to anyone. <laughs> so, and, and we're anyone. You know, yeah. Anyone pretty much covers everyone. I don't yeah. know why they do anyone. They should say everyone. But anyway, if it could happen to these two. What chance do we have? Yeah. I'm just saying it could happen to anyone. Yeah. Anyway, hold on. Let me get the drifter. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently they separated a while ago due to spending more time apart because of the pressure of work. According mm. to a source, quote, Channing has been working nonstop with four movies announced for 2018 alone. Ow. It's hard on the marriage. The part where the person is working too much is right up there with the excuse where it's like, I don't have time to date. I'm so focused yeah. on my studies. Like, no, if you like this guy, you, make it you find time to date. And the part where you're busy traveling, I mean, hell, they have Skype and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can, eh, you have a lot of money. It's it's one thing where you're going to like a logging camp and you're gone for seven months at a time, <laughs> but we can get Salmon on a pro- private jet and get back for a weekend mm-hmm. or whatever. The, the, working too much. I don't know. Uh, anytime I've been with anyone who's been gone too much, all I've got, they're like, please come back so we can hump. <laughs> Never been like, well, it's been four days. That'll be that. Yep. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, damn near 87 hours. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, no, it's never that. Right. It's I can't You're wait right. to see the person. I'm going to yeah. start planning something romantic yeah. for when the person does return. So how soon do we start seeing those paparazzi photos of either Channing or Jenna, you know, having a coffee with sunglasses on in the corner of a, a coffee shop with a, another person? He should be hitting it early and off. I'm and sure her, he out of respect, options. should yeah. take about four years off. Oh, my God. Just take a vow of celibacy. Fair. That's the way Four movies at one time. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's he supposed to do? Yeah. So it's hard in the marriage, they said, to be apart so much, especially with a young child, which seems counterintuitive. Oh. Yeah. I, it's also a young child. I don't know how young Four the child is, old. but you just throw money at that problem. You get a night nurse. Yeah. You get a nanny. Yeah. And, and believe me, Make with my kids and the nanny or my wife, there is no there's no separation. Like they like her better than they like me. <laughs> I mean, it would, makes no difference. <laughs> Who's carting them off to gravity land? It doesn't matter. They, they, it's all fine. As long as I'm cutting checks. Yeah, they're everybody's fine. happy. They're fine with me, but it's not like, oh, I haven't seen them. I was out of town. Or they, it's everyone all the time. Everything's just running a million miles. This, yeah. this part where he's working too much. He's working too much and banging his assistant is, a, is an issue. Right. He's working too much. Give him a little slack. Yeah. You're onto something. Mm-hmm. Well, Esquire. Well, he's on to something. She, she's on to something. very well might be. Mm-hmm. Esquire reports that Netflix is looking to hire someone who's really, really good at binge watching TV shows. They're trying to fill a position with the title, quote, 
Editorial analyst, comma, originals. The job responsibility includes watching TV series, specials, and movies, and then tagging, rating, and writing summaries for everything. Mm. Mm. I Jimmy has t- professional TV watchers right. who work at his show. It sounds like a, the greatest gig oh, ever. Business. Just it, do it mine, what you're already doing. For mine for bits and things. Yeah, you just see some politician give some speech or yeah. some something wacky on some Good Morning Nebraska show or something like yeah. just just constantly watching. So I'd watch. But I wouldn't write anything down. I'd just have my yeah. arms folded and I'd be going, oh, fake Oh, yeah. So fake. Please. Please. Oh, come on. That's what made my <laughs> gig. I don't know if that's a gig where I just fold my arms and go, oh, fake. So <laughs> the fake. The Corolla Professional effect. naysayer. Yeah, yeah, no one would ever do that. <laughs> at the ever. End, at the end of your eight-hour shift. Adam, so what'd you see? Uh, fake fake shit, fake, 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 oh, more fake oh, 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 here's six pages on construction. Yeah. That guy was using a smooth ounce. Uh, he had a 20-ounce smooth Vaughn when he should have been using a waffle-ended 24-ounce Vaughn with a hatchet <laughs> handle. So fake oh. I have something here marked, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this guy said his wife was his best friend. Come on. Fake. Oh, please. Yeah. Underline. Yeah, apply your lies elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good gig for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you can go right over to Netflix. Mm-hmm. Austin Power star Vern Troyer has been Ooh, highest. I got another job. I don't know if they have this. Secret napper? <gasps> I know they have a secret shopper, but I just slink off into my room and shut the door behind me and then saw some logs for like 40 minutes and then come out again. Yeah, that's good. Is there a secret napper job? Probably. I I could do that. Well, probably keeping it close to the vest. Hotels.com could get in on that with you. Secret napper. Or you could just try out sleep apnea machines. Yeah, CPAP Oh, I got a CPAP. CPAP. I like when we've turned the corner. Now we have most of the commercials for cleaning all the devices. Uh Like, we have the CPAP cleaning commercials, and that's followed by the prescription med because you're too backed up from your (laughs) painkillers. Like, we're now turning the corner and doing the next piece of medication because we're all out of our minds. Everyone has so crazy. Right. So crazy. Mm -hmm. You're right. Well, Austin Power star Vern Troyer has been hospitalized for a reported alcohol poisoning this week. TMZ police were, uh, TMZ says. Did a thimble of Jägermeister <laughs> and went into anaphylactic shock. Police were sent to his home sneezed on him. after a friend called 911 and described him as being extremely. <laughs> his dad farted next to him on the subway. <laughs> he, went, he went into a coma. He blacked out immediately. <laughs> he said he was extremely upset, drunk, and suicidal. A message on his Instagram <laughs> says, quote, asking you to keep Vern in your thoughts and prayers. He's getting the best care possible and is resting comfortably. Appreciate the support from family, friends, and fans around the world. TMZ says the actor who's battled alcoholism for years is being held on a 72-hour evaluation. I don't, wow. I'm one of these guys that, like, I don't want to be a douche, but... He was in a movie. It's all all Mike Myers sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like I don't give yeah. the like. Oh, he's a big star. It's more like oh, that. Mike Myers yeah, yeah. did that novelty. He's a prop. Well, it's yeah. sort oh, of like what is the, the extension of them? Like the, the uh, heavy set Armenian gentleman from Borat right. who ran around naked. Are we? Is, is he supposed to give like really a learning brave, an- annex on <laughs> acting, or is he just yeah. a guy that the genius? <laughs> To put in his movie. He's been at Phil's house a few times. Good guy. <laughs> oh, is he? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> is he Have fun in the next movie. I'm just saying, like, I, are, I don't are think... Are you the Armenian guy that was naked? <laughs> hold on. Let me see the back of your balls. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honey, hold the oh, camera. God. And you're an Uber driver. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of like, I don't know if... Uh, yeah. Does Vern Troy get the credit or something like mine? <laughs> Dang. All right. Let me tell you about uh, Mad Men. He'll be, he'll, he might be messed. He's 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 with us. No, still. he will be missed, but he might die. Yeah. But he might be. Did you miss him? If uh, you live in California or Nevada, <laughs> it's an exciting time for you. Med Men redefining the cannabis industry and empowering people to exercise mm. their right to purchase cannabis. That's right. Premium shopping experience. All Med Men stores feature a wide range of products, knowledgeable and approachable staff. Find out what's best for you. Whatever you're looking to get. They'll set you up open for both recreational and medical users. Anyone over 21 with a valid ID is welcome. Providing the highest quality and safety. Don't worry about what you're buying anymore. They have trained professionals. They have experts. Check out 
There are eight locations in Los Angeles, Orange County, San Diego, uh-oh, and Vegas. And you can go to MedMen.com, find the nearest store. That's M-E-D-M-E-N.com. Go now and uh, let them know you heard it on the Adam Carolla Show and get 10 bucks off your order. How about it, Dawson? Exclusively for our listeners, visit MedMen and tell them you heard about it on the Adam Carolla Show. For $10 off your order, limit one per customer. Terms and conditions may apply. Check out MedMen today. All right. One more. All right. Well, there are now car vending machines in China. I don't know if you've seen these, but uh, we might have some pictures. The machines, which are many stories tall, actually dispense Ford vehicles for people to test drive. These super test drive centers, there's a picture we're looking at, are unstaffed digital vending machines that work with an app. So using that app, the machine identifies the user and then scrolls forward until the car is dispensed, just like a candy bar or a bag of chips out of a vending machine. Man, they do, in Japan, they do women's panties. Yep. China, they do cars. cars. A lot of range those Asians Whole have with spectrum. the vending machines. And really, there's really nothing that can't be done. Now, speaking of uh, Transformers, <laughs> there's a movie brewing here. Oh, yeah. Lightning bolt hits this place. Goes awry. See the cars becoming animated now. <laughs> Things start moving That's and right. walking. Mm-hmm. I mean, all it takes is a one well-placed lightning bolt, yeah. as I've learned. And it becomes a boring sitcom where they'll live in an apartment complex. They'll live in an apartment. Two, two, seven. <laughs> That's like one day at a time with four tourists. We've got two, two, seven. <laughs> oh, you think you're so hot just because you're a station wagon. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah well, and we make the Ford Fiesta with the <laughs> with the act. We get Carlos Salaraki or whatever his name is to do the. We get the guy to do the. That's the Spanish. The Ford Fiesta has oh, the funny, has the funny ah, Spanish yeah, accent, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And I'm then sure the, Carlos and then, Salaraki. Well, the guy did the voice of the. <gasps> uh, you know, you'll find him. The guy. Uh, the guy did the. Um, he did the voice of the Chihuahua on the Taco Bell commercial. Oh, okay, now you're talking. You're okay, oh, wow. Talking. We'll figure it out. I'm screwing up the this last from, name. The guy from the state, uh, Re- Reno 911 guy. Carlos Alzaraki. Right? Yeah. Yeah. From something Reno like, 911. Something like that. Yeah. Let, let, let him, let, let's hear some Chihuahua voice out of him. And then we get... Uh, uh, we get uh, Larry the Cable Guy to do the Ford F-350, the truck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mater. He's the big truck up there. Jim Parsons is the electric vehicle. He's like the Yeah. Mary. Oh, yeah. He's That's got the, perfect. the Ford electric vehicle. Louie, what, uh, what, uh, what are you seeing yourself um, at? Mm, flatbed. Flatbed. So we got you as a truck, too. So sure, maybe yeah. you'll, you'll be like oh, Larry's sidekick. Yes. I could, or else I could, yeah, I'd be a, uh, you know, a, a VW Beetle. I might be well, we're, oh, we're yeah. sticking with Ford product oh, here. Ford yeah, products? They've uh, already signed like on. Heads they've, heads they've already greenlit mm. this thing. You know what I mean? Ford Flex. Oh, Flex. Ooh, so we have you like a sporty yeah, minivan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like, like that. Smart. Yeah, as a woman. Oh, as a, as a, a woman. woman. Sure. All right, I'll and tell you what. You be the Ford Flex as a woman, and yeah. then what we'll do is we'll put the longboard surfboards on top of the Ford Flex and give it the wood side treatment, that. and that'll oh, be man. like the Spicoli surfer, yes. yeah. woody wagon right. kind of. Right. Gnarly. Man, I love those. I, I think that's what they modeled that, yeah. that car after, don't you? The Ford Flex? Yeah. I do. It really sense. does. It yeah. makes you... Is, is there, anyone writing this shit down? Because uh, it, it should be. That, don't you think that that is... A, I feel nostalgic when I see the Ford Flex. I go, oh, that reminds me of growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It has that same... Uh, that wood paneled... What was it? What would was you, it a oh, Ford? I called him a Woody. This is one of my many... <laughs> You know, we were talking yesterday about how I like to pass information on to thing on to people, and, and how they well rarely received. they rarely appreciate it. It's often oh, yeah. embraced and ingested. The very first uh, Teen Choice or Kids Choice Award or whatever we, we did many years ago, me and Drew did it. We we're hanging around with Destiny's Child backstage and like a young <laughs> Beyonce, and they were begging to come on Love Line and blah blah blah. And uh, they're like, "All right, we need you to go out there. We need you to present the award to." Who Daphne Zuniga or something, you know? And I said, "All right, what's the word? Well, here it is, and it's a surfboard, right?" And I go, uh, "We call it the Woody." And I said, uh, "Woody's the station wagon that carries the surfboard, like when the Beach Boys was right. talking about putting the boards right, in the Woody. Exactly, yeah, that's a yeah, Woody yeah. wagon, yeah. and then the boards hang out of the Woody wagon. This, this is not a Woody. This is a surfboard." And they're that's like, right. "Yeah." 
give it to Daphne Zuniga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm saying. It's just like, not a Woody, though. It's the first year. We got time to, you know, five years <laughs> on. We're not going to be able to change the name of this thing. Just hand, would you, the guy with that clipboard and the headset. Just the just hand the goddamn surfboard, the Woody, to Daphne Zuniga for, for fuck's sake. And I'm like, it's just, you know, it's not a Woody. This isn't a Woody. This is a surfboard. And the Woody, the flying nun wagon. That's what they, she drove in the flying. That's, 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 that's it's called the a Woody. same guy who won't crack the bottle. Right, yeah. right. It's the uh, same Dr. Job. Drew, maybe you'd be interested in handing this to Daphne? Yeah. What is? Of them trying to trip Bob Hope later with some Are boards. they still calling that surfboard a I Woody? I must kill myself on that <laughs> Woody. God damn it. All right. Let me tell you about uh, Geico. Even Bob Hope can't complain about Geico. Everyone's got the to-do list. How about you save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance? You don't have to go anywhere. Just go to Geico.com. 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance. It is Geico. It's the best. Spend 15 minutes. Find out just how much money you could be saving. You get yourself a new Woody wagon. You got insurance. <laughs> or Woody surfboard. You need insurance. They don't exist. Go to Geico.com. It's Geico.com. See if they still hand out they, Woody. They do surfboards, but they're not calling them Woody. Oh, oh, look at you, baby. Yeah, that'll be my legacy. That's, right. that's your legacy. You, that's my you, legacy. You got them off that the idea. big mouth Corolla goes, too. <laughs> It'll be great. Yeah, at my funeral. They'll be talking. You know uh, the Teen Choice Awards? No. <laughs> well, they have them, okay. Right. And they hand out a surfboard. Is yeah, I it? wasn't aware of that. Yeah, well, they do. Okay. Well, they used to call it a Woody. All right. Well, they stopped. You want to know why? Mm. Mm. Not really. Not really. Because the guy is dead over there suggested they do it 17 years ago. Oh. Anyway, All right. Adam. Our, our, anyway, our family's trying to grieve. I'm just the guy who polishes the urn, so I'm not really. I don't have a, I have a dog in the fight. I'm just here with a little. Make sure you so. keep the cover on the urn. Yeah, you got to keep the cover on. You're right. It can't be exposed to the atmosphere. All right. Let's see. Uh, Madison Capitol Theater. That'll be tomorrow night. That'll be me doing a one man show. Nice. So come on out to uh, Madison and the Capitol Theater and say hi. And live shows everywhere. Santa Ana's coming up, Esports Arena. That'll be all of us with Heather Dubrow from the Housewives, man, up on stage. That'll be April 21st. I'll be live. And I'm traveling all over the place. So go to adamcarolla.com. And Jim Jeffries coming in here tomorrow. We love Jim Jeffries. Louis likes Jim. Louis Anderson. Fantastic. Hey, Mom. Thank you. Stories for my mother. But you can read them, too. And you can get them now on Amazon. And you can also get a louisanderson.com. Yeah. As well. A signed copy. A signed copy. And, of course, check out that special big underwear. You can get that on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, and all that stuff. And the album is available tomorrow. So, And I'll be at uh, L.A. Live, you know, the ta- live sure. talks. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's tonight with Lori Grenier. Great. So, until next time, this is Adam Crawford, Louie Anderson, Gina Grand, Ball Brian, saying mahalo. <laughs>